If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be dealing with biology of tooth movement. So let's for a moment think about the various reasons why tooth movement can happen. So imagine a tooth as a person and think of various reasons why that person can move. So there could be three reasons as depicted in this diagram. So the first one is the tooth can move at its own will, let's say. Or the tooth is very, you know, accustomed to that kind of movement in the first image. Second, someone can force it to move. For example, a pathology here. All right. And the third one, which is here, someone can convince it to move. So let's say this one for which the tooth is accustomed or it is normal for the tooth. This is the physiologic tooth movement. And in cases of pathology, that is the pathologic tooth movement. And in the cases when we have some wires and we apply an optimum force for a sufficient amount of time, the tooth gets convinced for the movement and that is the orthodontic movement. So we have three kinds of tooth movement, physiologic, physiologic, pathologic and orthodontic tooth movement. All right. Okay, so in this video, we are going to focus on orthodontic tooth movement because I don't want to make this video long enough so that you get bored. So let's move on. So here, for orthodontic movement, we need to have three things. The first one is the optimum force. And then second is application of that optimum force for a sufficient amount of time. All right. And the third one is bone remodeling bone remodeling so these three things we need to have if you want tooth movement to happen so the reason i said we need optimum force optimum force is that because if you apply less force it would be insufficient and if you apply excessive force excessive force then it would cause damage so in both the cases less or excessive we would not get the results we want all right so what we need we need to have an optimum force and we'll study as the lecture proceeds what is that amount of optimum force another term that we should keep in mind is this bone remodeling so just keep in mind that when we apply force certain areas of the bone will resolve certain areas will resolve and there would be certain areas that will form this is not resolved this is resolve and there will be certain areas that forms and we'll see this with the help of a diagram so let me show it here all right so in this picture we are applying force from the left side all right and notice here we have this green thing going all around this is the pdl so we have this which is the pdl which is the periodontal ligament Imagine them to be rubber bands holding the tooth. So these PDL, these are rubber bands, let's say rubber bands that are holding the tooth in place in the socket. So now when you apply force from the left side, imagine when you apply force from the left side, there will be stretching of the rubber bands here. So these rubber bands will stretch, the size will increase. All right. And here, the size of these rubber bands, they will decrease because we are forcing the tooth here. So the space will get reduced and the rubber bands will compress here. So here there will be compression of the PDL and here there will be elongation of the PDL. So this force is applying pressure on the right side. We have pressure. We have pressure on the right side and we have tension on the left side all right so we have a rule here the bone which is subjected to pressure in this case this is the bone which is subjected to pressure it will resolve it will resolve and the bone which is subjected to tension which is this bone right here this will this will form this will form means bone will be deposited here and bone will resolve here 
Now let's apply a mild force and see what changes are going on in the area. So first we'll see the changes which occur on the pressure side. So we learned that this was our force which was in this case from the left side and because of this force we have pressure here pressure pressure side here and we have tension side here tension side here so now we are going to see the changes which are occurring on the pressure side what changes would be occurring here so in this diagram as it is very obvious you can see that the periodontal ligament it is compressed you can see it has been compressed here and that compression is almost to one third of its original thickness so the PDL will get compressed compressed to one third of its original thickness and there will be marked increase in the vascularity of the PDL so the vascularity of the PDL will increase and that is because of the increase in the capillary blood supply so our vascularity will increase vascularity will increase and because of this increase in blood supply there will be mobilization of some cells so some cells would come here let's say from red brown color so some cells will come here and these cells are fibroblast and osteoclast these are the fibroblast and osteo osteoclast so as the clast says this will cause bone resorption so this area will be having bone resorption because osteoclast are bone resorbing cells so as you can see the osteoclast these line up along the socket on the pressure side so the resorption here will be just immediately adjacent to the ligament the resorption will be just adjacent to the ligament here and this kind of resorption is called the frontal resorption so we have a resorption here which is called as the frontal frontal resorption okay now let's see what changes are going to occur on the tension side so changes on the tension side which is this space right here so as you can see the PDL gets stretched here so we have PDL PDL stretched here okay so you can see the distance between the alveolar process and the tooth is widened and also in this area we have increase in vascularity as we have here so in both these areas we have increase in the vascularity vascularity will increase now because of this vascularity some cells will also come here but these cells would be the fibroblast and the osteoblast so now these cells would be fibroblast and osteoblast here we had fibroblast and osteoclast but here we have fibro fibroblast and osteoblast so osteoblasts are bone forming cells so that is why we have bone formation on the tension side okay so what these osteoblasts will do they will lay down let's say this is our osteoid so they will lay down osteoid the portion that is underneath will calcify okay and will mature to form woven bone all right in addition to the changes we were having in the pressure and the tension side there is something which is called as the secondary secondary remodeling changes secondary remodeling changes so this also occurs so let's see with the help of an image example for example this is a tooth and if the tooth is being moved in a labial direction for example if this is the labial side and we want to move the tooth along the label side there will be bone resorption on this side isn't it and there will be bone formation on this side because this is our area of pressure and this is our area of tension 
all right but in addition to this resorption and this deposition we have some changes occurring elsewhere in the bone means there would be compensatory deposition of new bone on the outer surface of the labial plate so there will be bone formation here and there will be bone resorption here that is on the lingual side of the lingual alveolar bone so these compensatory changes they are done to maintain the thickness of the bone so we learn that the secondary remodeling changes they help in maintaining the thickness of the bone thickness of the bone all right so because of the secondary remodeling changes the tooth could be moved to a distance greater than the thickness of the bone itself because the bone will keep on forming and the tooth will keep on moving all right so this is the secondary remodeling changes now let's move on to extreme forces what happens when we apply extreme forces so now we are applying extreme force let's show extreme force here so in the case of extreme force what happens is you can see that pdl is almost you know gone that is the periodontal ligament has been crushed so on the pressure side this is our pressure side the pdl is almost crushed crushed and the blood vessels which were present here they will get compressed so the blood vessels will get compressed compressed so when the blood vessel get compressed there will be loss of the nutritional supply so there would be something which is called as hyalinization because of the loss of the nutritional supply will have something which is called as hyalinization hyalinization remember we had cellular elements here so these cellular elements they will undergo necrosis because we don't have blood supply now so these cellular elements will undergo necrosis necrosis so when the cells they undergo necrosis they will lose their histologic appearance means their distinct structure the nuclei everything will change or you know disappear and that is called as hyalinization all right so it is important to make a distinction between hyalinized zone which is seen in the connective tissue and the hyalinization which is happening here so this hyalinized zone it is not hyalinized connective tissue so this is hyalinized zone and not hyalinized connective tissue so this just means that we have loss of cells because of the loss of blood supply so when this happens when we have a hyalinized zone several days later some cellular elements from the adjacent undamaged tissue so some cellular elements from somewhere in the undamaged periodontal ligament they will move in they will move in like so and they will begin to remove the bone which is adjacent to the necrotic periodontal ligament so the bone which is adjacent to the necrotic pdl that will be removed and this is called as the undermining resorption so in the cases of extreme force we have undermining undermining resorption not frontal resorption undermining resorption now let's see what happens on the tension side so this is our tension side so here the pdl will get overstretched all right so the pdl will get overstretched and the blood vessels which we have here the blood vessels they will get teared because of stretching so there is tearing of blood vessel so we have ischemia ischemia hence when we have extreme forces there is net osteoclastic activity we have osteoclastic activity that is why the tooth will become loosened in its socket in the cases of extreme forces and that's not what we want that is why i said that we need optimum force we can also have pain and hyperemia of the gingiva because of extreme forces now let's see how much is the optimum force needed optimum force so we learned that when we apply mild force the periodontal ligament on the pressure side pressure side will get compressed all right they will get compressed 
and osteoclast will directly form in the area corresponding to the compressed fibers here so if we want our osteoclast to behave this way what we need to do we have to compress we have to apply such a force that the pdl get compressed only to a certain extent and what is that extent that extent is till our capillaries are not occluded so our capillaries are working fine we have to make sure that our capillaries are not occluded so when the capillaries are not occluded there will be no hyalinization so there will be no hyalinization because when the blood supply is compromised then only the cells will die hence the force applied should be equal to the capillary pulse pressure that is 20 to 26 g per square centimeter this is the optimum force that we need to apply so that there is no hyalinization and the osteoclast they form directly along the bone surface and they cause frontal resorption and not the undermined resorption we need to get frontal resorption all right so this pressure tension thing which we have studied it is called as the pressure tension theory and it is the most accepted theory on why the tooth movement happens there are other theories also which is the blood flow theory and the piezoelectric theory but we are not going to cover it because the video will get very long so i'll try to cover it in the upcoming videos let's come to the phases of tooth movement so we have three phases initial phase then we have the lag phase and then we have the post lag phase post lag phase so in the initial phase when you apply force there will be immediate movement in the tooth for example if i'm applying force from here and this is a tooth because of that force there will be immediate movement in this tooth all right that is there will be sudden movement of the tooth in its socket so why does it happen this is happen because of two reasons the first one is that the tooth is moving in the periodontal space the first one is that the tooth is moving in the pdl space and the second one second reason is that there could be bending of the alveolar bone there could be bending of the alveolar bone alveolar bone so even if you apply light force or heavy force in both cases this initial phase will happen it will pretty much be the same now in the lag phase there will be little or you know no tooth movement and this lag phase is different for mild force and extreme force because in extreme force we'll get hyalinization there will be hyalinization of the area so this lag phase will be of longer duration means there will be no tooth movement for a longer duration when we have extreme force no tooth movement or very less tooth movement for a longer time in case when we apply extreme force the third one is the post lag phase means after lag we have the post lag phase so in this we have removal of the hyalinized area so there will be removal of that hyalinized area and because hyalinization is no more then we can have movement again so we have movement again so in the initial phase we have movement movement within the socket in the lag phase we have no tooth movement or minimal tooth movement and the post lag movement we have movement again because of the removal of the hyalinized area